Fundamentals of Deliverance Salvation is free, but deliverance is at a price. You should not expect to wake up suddenly free from bondages without any intentional involvement on your part. The issues involved in bondages are usually hidden secrets. You can only discover such truth as you seek knowledge. John 8.32 states, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Three Pillars of Deliverance Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom are the fundamental tools necessary for that journey. For the sake of clarity, let us look at the following definitions. Knowledge, knowing the facts. Understanding, deriving the meanings from the facts. Wisdom, application of understanding. These tools will lead you to the platform for your deliverance, which is the fear of the Lord. There must be a sincere desire and yearning for knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Some people are gifted with knowledge of the spirit world, but do not understand how or what to do with that knowledge. Others who have the gift of understanding but no knowledge can learn from their informed colleagues and draw meaningful interferences. Yet another comes along with the gift of wisdom and is able to sit at the feet of the one gifted with knowledge in order to get understanding and develop effective strategies in the deliverance ministry. And I think that's us guys. <laughs> Because the Lord is really bringing uh, pastors like Pastor James Kowale and others who have knowledge and understanding and giving it that information to us as heart dwellers, Mother Claire, myself, Mother Elizabeth, in order to develop effective strategies for deliverance ministry, deliverance prayer. And it's happening on the mountain community as well. So back to the message. My deliverance came with a willingness to pay whatever price or go to whatever distance required. I had seasons of prayer, fasting, and petitioning God, according to Proverbs 2, 1-6. During those seasons, I also read books and attended seminars to learn from others who had the knowledge in the areas that I did not have. Proverbs 2, 1-6 says, My son, if you receive my words and treasure your commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. It was Charles Spurgeon, one of the noted deliverance ministers, who said, Wisdom is the right use of knowledge. To know is not to be wise. Many men know a great deal. And are all the greater for it. There is no fool as great as a knowing fool. Knowing how to use knowledge is to have wisdom. God knows all mysteries and will reveal the secrets and the tools necessary for deliverance of those who fear him. The heart that fears God hates everything that is associated with evil. That heart is fertile ground for total deliverance. He will deliver you in his timing according to his will and purpose. With or without your deliverance, he remains God. He does not change. The power behind Jesus' ministry was for Jesus to fulfill the ministry ordained for him, the Father endowed him with, the Holy Spirit to equip him. We read this in Isaiah 11, 1-4. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor shall he decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide of the equity for the meek of the earth. He shall rise, he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. The Lord Jesus delighted in the fear of the Lord. No wonder Jesus, the Son of God, was able to minister to deliverance effectively as the Son of Man, because of the power of the Holy Spirit. He then gave his disciples and the church at large the same mandate before he ascended to heaven, but they had to wait for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to empower them for the task assigned. Mark 16, 15 to 18. And he said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall speak with new tongue. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Luke 24, 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endowed with power from on high. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord may mean different things to different people. So for clarity, I will use the Bible definition in Proverbs 9.10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
Without this wisdom, it is impossible to know God or to understand His ways, much less to submit to them. For this wisdom, we must seek Him. And if we come to Him, we must believe that He is and that He will reward those who diligently seek Him by revealing Himself. When He reveals Himself, our response is to accept and willingly submit to Him. He is sovereign. That is, He rules over everything with absolute authority. From that platform of power, He does not need to consult men or seek counsel from His creation. He does what pleases Him according to His will and purpose. He can trust in His loving kindness. Psalm 36, 7, 9. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God! Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of their houses, and shall make them drink of the river of thy pleasure. For with thee is a fountain of life, and the light shall we see light. To fear God is to love Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, to honor Him above all. We must honor the things He honors and submit to His ways. The fear of God means honoring His word, His house, position of authority He established. Do you have the fear of the Lord? The Bible has much to say about the fear of the Lord. I soon realized that this is a way, the missing element in my life. Even though I was prayerful and had been in ministry for many years, but I did not understand that I needed it. Therefore, I never sought for it. On this deliverance journey, the following portions of scripture became very real to me. Proverbs 9.10 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Job 28.28 Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Psalms 1.1.1.10 1, 1, 1, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and good understanding have all those who do His commandments. His praise endures forever. The Holy Spirit taught me a lot about the fear of God. He required that I know it, understand it, and live that lifestyle in order for total work of deliverance to take place in my life. Deuteronomy 10, 12-13 And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, and to love Him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and the statues, which I command you to today for your good. Proverbs 10, 27. The fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked will be shortened. Proverbs 15, 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. The fall and its repercussions. Men have embraced death since the days of Adam. That death includes a willing separation from God and the right to disagree with Him. Our heart naturally seeks to negotiate God's terms despite His counsel and holds on to various aspects of evil. A heart that negotiates with Him is not one that delights in the fear of the Lord. Whatever you do in contempt of God fortifies bondages. Willful disobedience, despising servants of God, looking down on our parents and partially obeying His word, all increase our bondage. God looks far beyond our words and sees our heart condition. Role of Angels All victories in spiritual warfare are works of the angels of God. Yes, they are, guys. Angels open prison gates and lead souls out of captivity. They identify and surround those who fear the Lord Almighty. Psalm 34, 7, The angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear Him and delivers them. Your deliverance will involve angelic operations. You must learn to cooperate with angels as you seek your deliverance. Note how God commanded the children of Israel to obey the angels who sent him to lead them. Exodus 23, 20-25 Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in thy way, to bring thee to the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, obey his voice, and provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, an adversary unto thy adversaries. For my angels shall go before thee and bring thee unto the Amorites, the Hittites, Parasites, and Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I'll cut them off. They shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works. Thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and quiet break down their images. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I'll take sickness away from the midst of thee. The Power of Worship all bondages are bad of worship. That is the real bone of contention. The devil knows the power of worship and works to deny God the worship that's due to him and tries to channel worship to himself. He understands God honors voluntary worship and that defiance against God exalts Satan. That is the position he wants most, to achieve that end. Satan will oppress, manipulate, coerce people to do his bidding. People in bondage are limited in their capacity to worship God. 
The Lord commands Israel to worship him so that his blessing will be upon their food and water. He also promised to take away all their sickness and prevent miscarriages and barrenness. The Lord promised a full lifespan to those who love him and tear to those who hate him. The fear of God awakens your spirit to worship the living God. The manifestation of the fear of the Lord on any person's deep worship and reverential awe. Worship is not just singing a few slow songs written by others who had experienced God. Worshiping God is not mechanical and is not something we can do by ourselves. Worship is a response. Had I understood the place of worship earlier, it would not have taken over seven years to seek my personal deliverance. I used to assign almost four hours daily to praying, binding, or bringing the power which oppresses me. Then I began to discover the power through Bishop Joshua Lower, teaching of Omega Healing Center in Kampala. As a result, it took a few days for me to be totally free. Worship starts with surrender. Romans 12.1 Therefore I urge you, brothers, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship. There are conditions attached to the offering mentioned above. What you offer no longer belongs to you. God must have the right to do whatever he chooses with the offering. It must be given voluntarily and without any reservation or stipulations. Your heart must trust that he is a faithful God. The sacrifice can only be presented by priests, and any other presenters is illegal, nullifies the sacrifice no matter how good the intent. 1 Peter 2.9 identifies this as royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. That gives us the legitimate status to go before God and present ourselves as a sacrifice before him and be accepted. We need to fulfill the conditions as stated in Psalm 24, 3, 4, when the psalmist asks, Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted his soul to any idol nor sworn deceitfully. Clean hands, pure hearts, soul free of idols, free from deception and lies. We're seeking restoration of our Father's house, whom is qualified to stand before him. The power of deliverance originates and resides in the heart of God, in His presence. We are seeking the deliverance of our inheritance. Worshiping God requires the ability to stand in His presence. The place of His presence is called the Heel of the Lord, or Mount Zion. Read the next pass out loud, please. But on Mount Zion will be deliverance. It will be holy. The house of Jacob will possess its inheritance. Every royal court has protocol for people to enter and entreat the favor of the reigning monarch. In Uganda, when one enters the presence of Buganda king, every man must prostrate himself and rub his beard on the ground as he, enters, as he enters into the king's presence. Throughout that time, that man is not allowed to show his back to the king. Even today in civilized Africa, we still uphold these traditions to honor the office of the king. The Bible provides the correct protocol for approaching the presence of the monarch of the angels in Psalm 125. Serve the Lord of gladness, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is good. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. Know that he is not just asking for singing, thanksgiving, and praise. Those activities must be anchored in the reality that he is God. He made us, and not we ourselves. We are his sheep and his pastures. He is our shepherd. He is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth will endure forever. The power of high praise. Follow the pattern of prayer that Jesus taught his disciples in Matthew six nineteen to thirteen. The key is to honor God in the beginning and also at the end. As priests standing before God, we must learn to hallow His name. So that name above every other name, challenges and situations in your life. Let that name be exalted in your spirit and in your mind. Then let it explode out of your mouth in jubilant, extravagant praise. Shout those praises so that creation hears and rejoices with you. Remember that they are patiently waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God to be free from the bondage, to be free from their bondage. They're also listening and hearing these kind of praises will give them hope. How do you get to the place where creation rejoices with you? Declare truths about God. He has been careful to reveal himself and his dealings with men since the dawn of creation. Declare what you see about him as you read his word. You have seen him working your life and the life of others. Declare to him what you have seen. If you run out of what to praise God, then I encourage you to take some time to read through the following scriptures and hear how the heroes of the Bible praise God. Take an hour or two to read them out loud as proclamations, standing in agreement with the writer. Allow your heart to tap into what the writers were experiencing when they wrote them. And here are some of the scriptures.
Proclaiming the wonders of God causes divine intervention. God abides in the praises of his people. Engage the weapon of declaring the marvelous works of God as you seek your deliverance and deliverance of others. Look at the heavens, the sea, the mountains, the beasts of the wilderness. God has made all of them. He is able to deliver you. Nothing is too hard for him. Give him glory and honor and praise. When we release praise, a sacrifice for our lips, the ancient gates and everlasting doors left their heads. Ancient gates have imprisoned many destinies. When they are opened through high praises, the King of Glory comes to deliver those destinies. Praise also involves the word of our testimony. Testimony paralyzes demon spirits. I've seen many delivered as I testify about my deliverance from Satanism. I've seen demons scream and run when people are testifying. Wow, guys, that's powerful. Revelations 10, 12. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives until death. Encountering the presence of God. The more our heart is aligned with the praise it declares, the deeper we'll submit to God. He will respond to the declaration of truths about himself. He will respond to a surrendered heart. He will also respond to those seeking him according to his protocol. In summary, a surrendered heart and the declaration of his wonders, majesty, and supernatural works will draw his presence. He promises to be in the midst of that atmosphere. That is where he reveals himself. As the great God reveals himself, our heart begins to respond. That wholehearted response is what God considers as worship. Although the environment may be corporate, God reveals himself to each person on an individual level. To some he speaks, others he may see visions, while some are just soaking in a spiritual shower. The manifestations are limitless. The magnitude of his glorious presence impacts people powerfully but in different ways. Isaiah became aware of his unworthiness. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah 6, 5. Daniel had no strength and fainted. The man of Daniel was terrified. They ran and hid themselves. Daniel 10, 7-9. Saul on the road to Damascus fell to the ground. Acts 9, 3-4. John in Revelation fell prostrate on the floor. Revelation 1-19. All of this is worship. God is seeking those who worship him in spirit and in truth. This kind of worship is where his people are encountering him and encountering his people. Humanity interacting with the divine. In this atmosphere, we begin to experience his glory. And where glory is manifested, bondages are completely broken. Praise and thanksgiving is a gate to worship where deliverance and healing takes place. I cannot begin to tell you how many miracles I've seen over the years that took place during times of deep, beautiful worship. Here, worshippers are lost in his presence and fully submitted to his lordship. No one needs to minister. The mighty deliverer stands up and all the enemies flee. Indeed, no wickedness can stand in his presence. The level of submission is active resistance against the devil. The Lord Jesus demonstrates this by actively agreeing with the word, wisdom, and counsel of God. He understands as a sacrificial lamb his opinions, thoughts, and desires are fortified in submission. As a result, Satan fled and the Lord Jesus Christ continued for a season without resistance. The Bible promises that Satan will flee when resisted and you will be free. When he flees, you are free. James 4, 7 Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So that closes day 4 in chapter 4 of the book Freedom from Bondages in My Father's House. What did we learn in this chapter? What is the Lord saying to us? My takeaway is that we must understand how deliverance takes place. There are three pillars, as Pastor James says, knowledge, knowing the facts, and that's knowledge of spiritual things, knowledge of spiritually what is going on with you. You must know the facts of your struggle, your bondage, and information concerning your family, your bloodline. Understanding, deriving the meaning from the facts. So when you find the facts, you must understand what is needed to do next, and that takes the third pillar, wisdom, application of understanding, applying all that you have received, and that is what we're doing in these teachings, so everyone listening can receive wisdom as to what to do. Secondly, Pastor James says, whatever we do in contempt of God fortifies bondages. When we are disobedient or have scorn and contempt for God's instructions, it leads us into bondage. Pastor James gave some examples, not honoring our parents, partially obeying his word, having one foot in the world, one foot in the Lord, or sulkily obeying something the Lord has asked of you. 
Jesus requires immediate obedience when he gives an instruction to us. Living a lukewarm life in any way, all of this increases our bondage. And lastly, all bondages are battle of worship. Wow, if that's not the truth. The first place of deliverance and freedom, guys, is in worship. That is why Jesus has taught us as heart dwellers to spend substantial time with him in dwelling prayer, where you listen to worship for one to two hours and allow him to minister to you through the songs. When I first came to the Lord, I would spend hours upon hours in the presence of God, and supernatural things took place. I received many, many deliverances and breakthroughs just in the midst of worship. So I would strongly encourage those who are seeking deliverance and freedom to start there. Spend one to two hours of uninterrupted time with Jesus in dwelling prayer, and miracles will take place because you can never truly leave the presence of God the same. And don't forget, guys, to donate and support the Phase 2 Building Project. We're almost at our goal. Donate on GoFundMe or PayPal with a note for the City of God. And also, if you're enjoying the series, please purchase Pastor James Kowale's book on Amazon. The link will be in the comment section. God bless you, family, to the next message.